Hello, uh, my name is Nina and I live in Artsakh and I have been in blockade for more than three months now. Azerbaijan has closed the only road connecting Artsakh to Armenia, which is Lachin Corridor, and for more than three months we've been deprived of food supply, medicine supply, gas supply, partially electricity supply, and most importantly, freedom of movement. Life hasn't been really easy in Artsakh ever. We were in the gray area almost all the time, but I think before the war we used to have um, some freedom and some dreams. And after the war it all became a bit meaningless because you never know if whatever you created will last here for one day, one year or one decade or maybe for hundred years. On December 12th, uh, last year, a group of self-proclaimed Azerbaijani, they call themselves eco-activists, uh, set up a roadblock along the Lachin Corridor, uh, supposedly protesting the illegal mining of Azerbaijani territory by Armenians. The Russian peacekeepers who were there uh, are, are actually under the terms of the uh, November 10th ceasefire agreement are in control of the Lachin Corridor and are supposed to be guaranteeing movement along the corridor, but they have been unable to persuade um, the protesters or Azerbaijan to move the protesters. Because the Lachin Corridor is the only road, it's the only link between Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia, therefore the outside world, because they cannot get out any other way. The indigenous Armenian population of the region is therefore effectively closed off and essentially being held under siege. I would even say it's almost like a very large open air Prison. Well, since the blockade started, I think 94 days have passed and it's already, it's already near 100 and it's a bit unbelievable for us because uh, nobody expected this. I'm a bit active on social media and since the blockade happened, um, I think I dedicated a week or something to the blockade and just educating people about what it's really like to be here. Shortages of everything that is possible, we all have it because um, Artsakh isn't a um, separate country. We are part of Armenia and generally we get everything from Armenia. And now that the road is closed, we have no, um, no way of getting uh, some essentials like, for example, rice. We don't have rice here. And most of the greenhouses are now part in Azerbaijan's territories. So the we were not prepared for this kind of situation. Uh, we have the coupon system in our country where we get coupons for a limited amount of sugar, flour, and something like that. We don't have electricity for six hours a day. For example, today, they just turned my electricity on. It means that in three hours, they will turn it off again. Gazamatakarar Mancha Panman, Yev Electra Kanutian Hofharain, Uvatarain and Jatum Neri Hetevankov, Artsahum Pakvele Hadurtas Niot, the Prots Karasun Mek Manga Partes, Isun Vets Naha the Protsakan Hump, Xan Yerkaruria, Sumnakan Hastatutun. We had very short classes, uh, not only because it was cold, uh, but also because children didn't have food to bring to school. Armenia has taken legal action uh, in front of the International Court of Justice uh, and in front of the European Court of Human Rights on this issue and has won before both courts orders on Azerbaijan to lift its blockade. The biggest threat to the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh is for them to be forgotten. What people from uh, international community can do to help ourselves right now is to share the issue and share the agenda because people act when a lot more people act. 
So say if one person does something, it's not a virus. If thousand people do the same thing, a uh, thousand more will join.